Hello, hi, welcome, welcome to Craftwork. Uh, my name is Miss Gender or Miss Asuma Gender, whatever floats your boat. And I'm here today with... Uh, Sam, I am from Arts Junction and we will be upcycling different materials that you can find around the house to craft with. Yeah, so the purpose of these crafts is to create either wearable crafts, either something you can have on your head, on your necklace, on your body, or even just something that you might want to look at that is cute, you know? Yeah. So the first craft that we have here is a can, a tin can, or an aluminum can, rose, tulip, whatever you'd want to call it. Some kind of floral, floral moment. Exactly. So, um, the first thing you'll want to do is take your can that you have there and kind of choose whichever color you want. Um, it can, the aluminum from the inside will end up being the outside of the flower. Yes. So this is our cans that we'll be using to cut up and turn into flowers. So the first thing you want to do is just um, take your scissors and lay on the cutting board. Just lay your can flat. So. First thing you're going to want to do is kind of just cut, just do one initial sear, yeah? Nice. And then just, it doesn't matter how jagged it is because we're going to fix it after, and just cut, cut the ends off this thing. Oh, and there might be some liquid that comes out. Nice. Um, it's just an extra treat yeah, for later. Yep, yeah, so you can do that end. And you do the other side. Yeah. You can really use as many as you want. All right. So, the reason we have multiple cans is that it depends on how big you want your flower petals to be. Um, if you want to create a large flower, a small flower, um, the small would probably be work with one can, but if you want to create a larger one, you'll use two. So the first thing we did was just cut off the end, and we have this initial um, rectangular piece. And now, yep, you'll just want to take a nice cut in the middle, lay it out flat, but now basically just go around um, Go around the edges of the can and cut all the jaggedness off, essentially. Mm. Yeah. So we're cutting straight lines. Yep. Yeah. Cutting straight is not something I'm good at. <laughs> you just don't want to cut yourself here. So that you're protected with your nice gloves on. Yeah, I've got my protective accent to nail. Yeah. All right. How are we doing? Good. For cool. Thanks. So, show these up. Now we have two nice rectangular pieces. Beautiful. So now, um, I guess you want to cut about um, two inches in. So, okay. you'll make a few cuts just like this. Okay. Yeah. Some nice little chunks. Yep. Yeah. And a few more. Okay, so now you'll want to do kind of a um, trapezoidal shape to cut it. So Ooh, that's a geometry term. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I 
So we'll just cut back and forth like this. Okay. And this is kind of just to start the initial shape of the flower petals. So, so not quite here. triangles. You want like a okay. boxed kind of... A little tiny piece. Cool. Yeah. I mean, it could be triangles, it could be squares, but um, in the end, you can really shape the leaves however you want. Nice. So, okay. So now we're cutting the pieces, the little tiny trapezoidal pieces, which will be the beginning of the leaf. So how is your pile looking? So you have some nice big petals. I got some big guys. So let's see there. So depending, um, you might actually want to cut another one. So we could even just go ahead and cut another one. Like another can? Yeah, just cut okay. some more because I'm looking at them and yeah, you'll probably need some more. For sure. But yours is going to be nice and big, much Good. larger than mine. Uh, bigger the better. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go with the second can now. God, I feel so butch. And the purpose of why we're doing this is because um, making crafts, you shouldn't have to go out and buy um, supplies and materials all the time. You should be able to find different materials around your house and upcycle them and turn them into something. Because we want to try and stay away from waste. And that is our mandate at Arts Junction to try and save as many materials from the landfill as possible. That's a good practice yeah. to have. Drag queens and drag performers and kings and whatnot, we're all very good at upcycling and reusing. Yeah. I've definitely used the lashes I'm wearing about eight times since I got them. Yeah. Um, not a great example, but I've, <laughs> I've, we also do a lot of sharing a lot of you know alterations to things mm -hmm. that we find because mm -hmm. we're trying to create certain silhouettes and mm -hmm. certain um, aesthetics with stuff that is cheap and nice and affordable. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your your fascinator in a sense. Oh. This is uh, upcycling in its finest, isn't it? Yeah, this is actually I had bought a little thing of um, dollar store yarn balls because I was like I'll probably use these for mm -hmm. something and I just had a bunch of craft stuff laying around from my parents place before I moved out the pom-poms um, and I ended up competing in a, um, a drag pageant um, yeah. and the theme was club kid uh, okay. which is a fashion movement that is very kind of I don't know if I can say gender f it's very kind of mm -hmm. artsy um, and I did this kind of like crafty yarn clown look mm -hmm. and I had this bodysuit with yarn on it cool. and then for my entrance look I was knitting with the yarn from the bodysuit that's hilarious which yeah. I thought was fun and cute but I did lose that pageant and I'm okay with that you're a winner baby and <laughs> how, how uh, did you end up wrapping this yarn that you made around you I ended up like botchedly sew it, like just kind of basting it all mm -hmm. over the suit. Yeah. And then I had a skirt on. Okay. So it was, it was, Word. it was meant to look like, you know, your yarn drawer in your craft room, yes. which I'm sure everyone can relate to as being a little bit of a hot mess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is probably why I, I have it. a, exactly, we all have a bit of yarn or something in our house. Oh yeah. That's what I'm working with at home. So. 100%. Now we have, um, a pile of aluminum pieces here. So, yes, you have a really good amount. Thank you. So now, um, so I guess you kind of want them all to be a similar size. So here, we're going to start with a rectangle um, and kind of just create leaves. So the end can still be flat, the bottom of the petal, um, but the top could be curved. It's, it's kind of however you want the leaves to look. So there's really okay. no rules when it comes to this. Um, but I guess you could do... But you're just kind of like rounding it out a bit? Yeah, yeah, just rounding it out of the edges. So we'll have to do this for just a few minutes. Thank you, thank you. So how are your leaves coming? My leaves are coming along. Yeah. <laughs> they, are, they are going. They are not all the same shape or size, yeah. but you know, that's that's like life and that's like the world we live in well, and i think that's beautiful yeah well the thing is you can even not even just a rose petal you can make kind of uh you know when a flower is budding in the spring and it's just kind of 
about to come, or the ones that, you know, go to sleep at night, in a sense, and then they bloom in the mornings. Mm. So you can make it look like it's kind of coming out of a cocoon. Yeah. We're just, we're, we're getting there. So the, um, the trick is also to make sure you have a little bit of tin, at the, or I guess aluminum at the end, just so you have enough to glue mm. onto mm -hmm. the, um, the base of the stem. Got you. It's really fun crafting with other people. Yeah. Because you can like collaborate, you can talk about your day, but you still kind of feel like you're you're doing something, mm -hmm. which is nice. I like having something to do with my hands, which is why. It keeps you busy, right? And mm -hmm. it really calms you down, I find. Yes. And it's also cool just to kind of look around your house. And even in terms of this, I would have never thought about this craft prior mm -hmm. to the other day. Just looking at different materials and realizing that you can make so much out of nothing. Yeah. Anything, really anything can be art, anything can be drag, anything can be a garment. Exactly. The sky's the limit. Especially right now when we're trying to limit, you know, how, how much we're going to the stores or, mm -hmm. you know, trying to save some money because work hours are tight in this current climate. Yeah. So, you know, if you want something fun and cool to wear and you don't want to go out and buy it, it's like, this, this can could be something. Well, even think about this. If you were to cut up these pieces, um, even to say like little ovals, like mm -hmm. hundreds of them, you could poke little holes through each end, connect them with chain, and in a sense you could kind of create a dress oh God, out yeah. of these cans if you were willing and able you know, that would be to cut that very much. cool. I think, yeah, I would experiment with something like that. Yeah, something like, um, I mean, even cardboard. I know we're going to be using cardboard for the yeah. next thing, but yeah, what would your like little kind of shapes like that. I'm very into the idea of dresses that are just hundreds of, of something, small pieces. Right? Yeah. yeah. Or even um, like old uh, pictures or slide, the slide oh, yeah. projector squares would be cool. Those are cool. I think the probably biggest garment that I've crafted for myself, and I almost wore it today because it's mm -hmm. very cute and fun, um, is like a flapper dress that's made out of worm on a, worms on a string. Really? And I had about 120 of them glued cool. to a bodysuit. Again, yeah. glued, because I can't sew You glued it, yeah? Eyes. Okay, amazing. So yeah. much hot glue. That's God. what hot glue is for. People, people like to rag on hot glue for, you know, whatever. It's not permanent. It's not, um, you know, especially when it comes to making outfits. But it's yeah. like, for me, I, I need it to last an evening. I need it to last four rigorous minutes. Yeah. And then if it falls apart, that's that's how it goes, and I can glue it back together for the next and time. And it did, and it did the job, right? And it did, as long as it does the job. And creates that illusion, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to create. It creates the magic. And then I can repurpose it into something else. Mm -hmm. I figure when the when the dress falls apart, I might try and make it into a wig or a headpiece yeah, or that's hilarious. something like that. So how are we doing with our I am on my very last one. Yeah, me. Now that is too. all my petals, and we have all this dangerous confetti. Great. Love it. So why don't we just show our we have our petals, which we have created out of the cans here. Uh, a few different colors. Um, so now we are going to start. Oh, we plugged our glue gun. We did. Yeah, yeah. Our, our things are plugged in. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna take. Now, now now's the part where we're gonna hot glue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you don't mind getting your hand um, a little burnt? Oh no. You know? Okay. No, I glued these gloves onto my arm yeah. because the glove is stretchy and the fabric isn't, and I think that's a universal drag experience of. Yeah hot gluing various things to mm -hmm. your body mm -hmm. or you know super glue which i haven't done but i've used like nail Ooh. glue for different things yeah. and it's like burns Did not a know? not a great not a great idea but you know has to last four rigorous minutes and then you can take it off yeah yeah super That's super glue is a scary one i wouldn't want it to end up in my hair or anything yeah right? <laughs> all right all right so now <laughs> we'll be taking our hot glue here um, and we'll just be starting with the base. So the trick is here, um, so you can kind of choose, it doesn't really matter what side you choose. Um, if you just want to start kind of bending the um, tin or mm -hmm. the aluminum, mm -hmm. just to kind of, because you'll start, I guess, some okay. little skinny, so you'll start like one or two here. Um, so yeah, we'll just start putting some glue. Um, do this. 
And, you know, the first few don't really matter how they look or what kind of, yeah, what, just enough to kind of give the other ones a base and something to hold on to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, will you be uh, performing later today? I will not. I think no? this is my, this is my event. Yes. Here. Later today, I'm going to have a nap because it's my first day off from both my jobs in about 10 days. Oh, geez, yeah. <laughs> we got to do what we got to do out here. Oh, yeah. Guess, right? But I'm really looking forward to watching the other events. Yeah. A lot of my drag family is going to be involved and my close friends and yeah. my, my place of work is helping to produce and do stuff, which is also exciting. Where's that? Uh, Sunshine House. Oh, yes, okay. I thought you were just helping them out. You're working there, too. Yeah, I That's am amazing. the uh, presently part-time uh, technical project assistant. Great. Does, um, does Quentin work there? Yes. Amazing, yeah. yeah. That's so cool. I can't remember what Quentin's official title is. Yeah, um, me neither, yeah. But they've been, they did a ton of stuff for the telethon we just did, and I think are helping to organize the two-spirit powwow that's going to be happening. Yeah. Um, lots of, lots of just really great, really great stuff, really great people. Well, that looks really good. Thank you. So let me just see yours for a sec. Mm -hmm. So just hold it up. So what they're doing here, yeah, they're just kind of, um, overlaying each different petal and they'll, yours is going to look really good. I like the shape. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. No. And then also, like, as you, um, continue on with the petals, you can slowly bring the outside ones, like, an, like a centimeter down. So that you kind of get um, this effect here of, yeah. Yeah, of the petals. Kind of a cascading yeah. situation. And how long have you been working at the Sunshine House? Uh, just since the fall. Yeah? Yeah. Um, with the COVID restrictions and things in place, they were uh, looking to um, have someone, I guess, help to manage some more of the online and digital programming. Okay. Um, so I've been able to help out with that, which has been really great, but also working a bit with the with the drop-in programs as well. Yeah. But we've done a couple So you're doing some remote stuff? Sorry. Remote stuff? Yeah. Okay. The um the COVID convos that happened uh every two weeks. Um what's that? It's like a it's a round table and it's to yeah. totally distance. People can do it like right from their house, but it's usually with um different figures and community members in Winnipeg and Manitoba. So uh Uzoma Asaguara um speaks, uh Dr. Marsha Anderson. Marsha, Dr. Marsha is great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um and then Levi, the executive director, um Karen Sharma. And oh, wow. That's a um, good group of people. Maggie from Manitoba Harm Reduction Network, like just a ton of yeah. really great folks. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, we'll we'll be able to bring in uh, some other people to talk specifically about um, specifically about harm reduction needs, mm -hmm. um, and kind of just up update the community on uh, various COVID related situations. Yeah. So yours is looking really good right now. Just yes. saying. <laughs> so we're getting there. Actually, that's yeah, that's that's nice. I'm kind of bending, bending the petals a little bit, yeah. just to try and. That at the end. And so like, when did you start doing drag? Ooh, that's a fun story. Yeah. Um, I am. I guess two years old as of December. Mm -hmm. Um, I started when I was, I guess I was 20, mm -hmm. um, and I kind of first got involved through Slunt Factory. Um, slunt? Slunt. Slunt. What's Slunt? Slunt, uh, slunt yeah. Factory <laughs> is a group that was founded by Moxie Cotton, Dirt, uh, and Stara David, okay. and I knew Stara David through the University of Winnipeg mm -hmm. because they were, and I think continue to be, um, the Rainbow Lounge program coordinator there. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were like, yeah, I do drag. And I was like, oh, interesting. And I was kind of like, I don't know if that's something. Like intrigued by it almost? Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I'd like heard of drag. I watch Drag Race. I have mixed feelings on the show. 
yeah. that we won't get into here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was kind of looking for different uh, means of creative expression um, because my, my minor at school is in theater. Oh, um, yeah. So okay. performance is something that I really, really love. Um, but because of the way theater kind of works in Winnipeg, there are some issues as far as accessibility for um, people who are visibly queer, people okay. who are fat or plus size. I use fat as a self descriptor. Yeah. Um, people with various disabilities. There's just, there's kind of limited funding and avenues for that. So I was like, how can I show off all my, all my great, all my great and fun skills? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that sounds really braggadocious, but I, I meant it sarcastically. But like, how can I show off my three years of, of dance classes? And drag appeared to be one of the ways that I could kind of branch out and connect with the community. Because okay. at the time, I was kind of isolating myself from other queer people and other trans people because um, I didn't really feel comfortable with myself or my, my self-expression yet. Mm -hmm. And over the past two years, it's become a way to really, you know, show, show off my, my gender, show off my, my interests uh, and connect with people. So kind of through that I got to learn about Sunshine House and I got to um, start volunteering with them originally as part of a practicum I was doing at school. Okay. Yeah. Um, which was fantastic. Oh, so you, were, you did it through school. Okay. Yeah, I got, I got to know them through school and then yeah. I finished that program. Um, and then I ended up applying to work there as well um, this past year. But then I got to perform with them at Pride two years ago. Um, I've got to go on some really fun trips to Fort Francis. Yeah. I guess Fort Francis is the only one. Um, but just had some really neat opportunities. I got to be on the uh, Drag in the Peg podcast for the second season. Yeah. Um, which was really neat. So, here I am nearing the end of my flower. And some look nicer than others, as you can see. You did an amazing job with it your takes flower. It all, all flowers to make a garden, though. Yeah, you exactly. Know? So now um, I'm just going to go ahead and put one more little piece of glue here. And the theme, you know, is gorge. We want it to look amazing. So we're going to continue on and add some more goodies to these crafts. Yes. So. What I'll be doing for mine, just because I love glitter, I think everyone might love glitter, oh, I'm yeah. not too sure. Um, I'm just going to take some spray paint and we have our masks on for good measure. Are you okay with it? Okay, just a little bit. Um, I'm just going to... Spray it in and then... You're gonna du that's dip smart. it in the glitter, yeah exactly. And just move it around and see what happens. So now that is Ooh. one step if you want to maybe yes, use some. Yes. Yes. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Ah, see I That's found fun. I found the flaw in my big pedals which yeah. is does not fit in the bag. You could also just maybe um, sprinkle them over mm -hmm. on top if you like. I think we're like. going to do that a bit. Yeah. It's nice that we have this fabric here, but I bet at home you could use some newspaper and stuff just to keep from destroying your home with glitter. Yeah, Which exactly. I'm the worst for. Like, my, every time my partner leaves and gets home, he's like, found some glitter in my sock. <laughs> I'm like, well, you're dating a drag queen, so that's just kind of par for the yeah. course. You'll clean up and years later you'll see a few pieces. Oh yeah, a hundred. When yeah. I, the last two apartments I've moved out of, I've had to vacuum up just a ton of, a ton of glitter. Yeah. So now then. I'll find rhinestones mm -hmm. and beads and eyelashes. So how is that looking? Looks really good. good. I like. I kind of like having the like the can labels show through. Honestly. Oh, you did it the other way. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I did it the other way because cool. I was like, I feel like this mix of colors looks neat, but it's kind of like, I don't know, the visual repurposing and like, 
I don't know, a comment on consumerism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. And that even just looks good in your hand, just with the outfit, it looks, yeah. I know, I'm trying to think of how to stick it into my hair. Yeah. So now, um, we're just going to be doing some additions to add on to our flowers. Um, what are you going to put on? I'm going to found some of this, like, ribbon stuff that looks 100% like ribbon my parents owned when I was a kid for mm -hmm. like Christmas things so I'm just gonna like kind of bundle it around to give it a little bit of a little bit of body yeah I'll do the same just a little bit of red kind of mimic a rose and we're just gonna keep using glue here. glue is every every crafter every queen's best bestest friend yeah I, um, what did I do? I did drag a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm from Toronto, so I did, oh, I did a Pride Toronto one whole week of different drag queens. Oh my god. So I just had different characters. Yeah. Um, what was your drag name? Um, or what is your drag name? Well, the thing is, I don't know. I haven't really discovered that yet. So I had, I had Bernice, who's like an old gal from the 20s, you know, Ooh. she's very vintage. Um, and then there was Essence, who's like the high fashion goddess. And then there was... Oh, um, so you've got like multiple personas. Yeah, and they don't really have last names. That's, no, who you, needs a last name? You like, know, yeah. I'm the opposite. I was like, who needs a first name? Yeah. But then I was like, yeah. it's weird having people just call me gender. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because that was a thing for a bit. Or just calling me by my, like, my out of drag name, which was also kind of weird. Um, so... A friend of mine was like, what if you were assume a gender? And I'm like, that's cute. Yeah, so someone else kind of like propelled you into taking that name? Yes. Well, yeah. it was the best suggestion that there that there was at the time. Yeah. Because I can't remember what else I was... I was well, no, like, it's, a, it's a great name and it's super witty. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know there's a few people who are... I know there's a mixed gender somewhere in, I think, the States. Mixed gender. Yeah, like mix, but or like the, gen the gender neutral, yep. like honorific, mm -hmm. as opposed to Mr. or Miss or Mrs. So it's Ooh. mix. Yeah, I'm just trying to. Have you burned yourself yet? I've had a couple yeah. near misses. <laughs> Have you done any drag since you came to Winnipeg then? No, I've been too scared, you know? Why? Because I feel like in Toronto, like I'm born and raised downtown, like I know oh a lot of queens. And yeah. I, I have uh, I have 14 siblings. Oh, wow. So two of them uh, do drag. So it's like the three of us, we were like the three sisters. That's so sweet. And I think since not having them as my mentors, like in person, because of COVID, I haven't been mm -hmm. able to go back and everything. 100%. I've just, you know, taken a break. You know, I'm shopping online for wigs and trying to explore my options, Beautiful. you know? Yeah. Um, well, I should say you should never, you know, never be afraid. The city is has got some really great places to start yeah. in terms of, you know, if you want to perform. And COVID makes things harder, but Slunt Factory is like... So I should were, look into that. Yeah, look yeah. In, follow, follow them on Instagram. Um, but it was originally kind of created to be a monthly show at Club 200. Mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of like a showcase for newer folks who... Uh, are wanting to try drag out uh, and who maybe aren't necessarily getting booked for for larger larger scale gigs because they're you know just new to the scene mm -hmm. um, so it's a very welcoming very fun environment and that's that's where I got my my first start uh, in drag okay be because of that group slunt factory slunt factory I got to host a couple of their couple of their shows and it was really really lovely um, but yeah, like the Sunshine House queer bingos are also super fun. And anytime, like anytime there's an open show, you can always go throw throw your name down. Like, hey, I'm yeah, yeah. I want to perform tonight. <laughs> Here's my flash drive. Yeah, I know. I totally should. It's it's terrifying, but once once you do it, like you're you're in. Yeah, you're you go you be respectful you tip where you can mm -hmm. you cheer loud as hell and everyone else will cheer loud as hell back at you mm -hmm. yeah i just need to get my get myself together get my outfits you know and even like just trying to get some 
old clothes together, like even like mm -hmm. thrifted, I think that's like the only way to go, obviously, because uh -huh. we have to do it on budget. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, miss, like, I miss having Forever 21, because that was like... Was that easy stuff? That was the spot yeah. to get kind of like camp, like not trashy, but also my style is like, <laughs> can lean towards the style of like cheap and fun and like easy easy to easy. put together because yeah, yeah. if you if you can't or don't have time or money to make your own outfits fast fashion is one of those things that it's like you can get something and you can alter it and you can make it really stunning and really beautiful mm -hmm. and you know consumerism is hard and if you can thrift that's always better but you know as a as a fat person I don't find a lot of like cute clubbing stuff at the thrift stores okay, yeah. so a lot of what I do comes down to like buying something and altering it with hot glue and with, um, you know, patches and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it definitely takes time to kind of put together a good cohesive look. But I remember my, my first show was in, I think, a bodysuit and a skirt and a jacket that I had all got from Plato's Closet. Oh yes, mm -hmm. exactly. I like Plato's. So, how are you looking? I'm okay, yours looks so cute. I'm very... Super gorgeous. Super I'm gorgeous. Yeah, I'm obsessed. So, did you get the pin on? Yeah. You're lying! The little on the back, and the tool kind of hides hides the rest of the stem. And I'm just... Wow! I'm just see if so, I'm they skipped the step and just finished the whole craft for me. Cause I'm sorry. Go I got excited. That looks amazing, and that's exactly what we were going for. Just oh. have something to add on to your outfit. This would also be feel? a really cute brooch too, like yeah. a little lapel pin. Wow, mm. that's amazing! You did so good. Thank you're, you. You're, you're a natural. I listen. I love. I love this kind of stuff, and I'm super happy with this. So you're the right, the right one to to be doing <laughs> this then, right? Yeah, I'm. I was very excited when I got asked to do a craft workshop, and I was like, absolutely. That's like my whole. That's my whole brand. Yeah. So you know what's so funny when you when you take your time, mm -hmm. you do something at home, you get something that looks like this. And then when you're anxious and you're in front of the camera, you guess this. But they're all uh, like they're uh, all good though. But the whole oh, so you got it in your hair. Oh, I was thinking a brooch, but I don't have anything. <laughs> so let's see. Maybe I could Yeah, if you had a safety pin, like you could which I don't. I could not find one this morning and I did need one. But if you had a safety pin Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I love it. Hey! <laughs> or like even, like, because all of this stuff is just glued to a headband. So if you had a headband, like yeah. literally just, like that's how I do, Where'd it go? like makeshift fascinators. Yeah! Um, it's just headband, because the hair hides oh, so much. Um, <laughs> so here we have it, you know? We have created a sort of brooch, a sort of headpiece. Um, Mine, yeah, apparently it's giving a little orchid vibe, a little bit of a violet. Yours is kind of, uh, how did you say it, a chrysanthemum? I think it's kind of like a hyacinth shape. A hyacinth, like, because yeah. It's, yeah, if I like built it up some more. And like these would also be neat even if you just made like a bunch of them on the stem and then you just have like a bouquet that is never going to die. Yeah, okay, that's amazing. Cute. Yeah, so that is our first craft that we've created. Um, yeah. And uh, there's so many different variations that this flower can turn into. You can turn it into, um, had different ideas such as putting these into earrings. Ooh, yeah. um, maybe a, what are they called? A lapel, I guess? Yeah, lapel pen. A lapel, um, a brooch, a hair piece, a head piece. There's so many different options for upcycling that you can do from a simple thing such as a cam, right? Yeah. So everyone, thanks for watching. This is an example of how you can upcycle different sorts of uh, materials in your house and use them to make gorgeous crafts. Gorge. So, gorge crafts. Yes, yes, gorge crafts. <laughs> Thank you for watching.
Hi, my name is Miss Gender or Asuma Gender. Hi, my name is Sam. We are doing some crafting for the Gorge Festival and this is craft work. What are so, we making? Today we'll be making um, a bracelet or a Ooh. sort of arm fascinator out of <laughs> weaving <laughs> cardboard. Beautiful. I Beautiful. like the term arm fascinator. Arm. That's just so cute. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, this is an example of what you can make out of old pieces of cardboard. There's limitless possibilities, right? Yes. So the goal of this craft is to have a piece of cardboard that will be long enough to fit around your wrist. Yep. So first, yep, you just have to check. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> pardon me. Um, We'll want to start by just laying the amount of long pieces that we'll be using to make the length of the bracelet, just kind of in a row. You can either, yeah, you can mix up the different size of cardboard, you can do different labels. Um, oh, and I'll just go back and say that basically we have used a cereal box to do this craft. You can use many different sorts of recyclables, such as a tissue box, cracker box, anything you can find in the cupboard of your kitchen, right? So, and we'll be inter, these will be interwoven pieces of cardboard. So this Ooh. might be a little too big. I'll do take, this one. Gonna here. take me back to girl guys. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you have your, yep, your four pieces there yep. ready to go. So now you're gonna want to, um, here. So you're gonna have to kind of, uh, how do I say it? Go back and forth. Okay. So let's start with one on top. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so then, let me see. So what? Just uh, kind of weaving like e that. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So it's a little hard to show the camera. We're just um, interweaving these. How do I show you? Like, like a little basket. Pieces of cardboard back and forth on top of each other. And we have our trusty glue guns again. So, oh, so here I'll tell you one okay, thing. Okay, so just one at a time? Yeah, one at okay. a time, because then um, there's a way you kind of have to fold the cardboard. It might um, okay. it'll become a little, uh, gotcha. it'll get a little weird. After I'll watch while. you. Yeah. I'll watch you through our, so, our distance glass. Yeah, so the first one, you just want to make sure the ends line up. It doesn't matter because you're going to end up cutting the entire thing off. Okay. Um, yeah, and just go back and forth. Let me just grab, yeah, exactly. We're going to get more glue. glue. Get more glue locked and loaded and ready. Okay. That happening. And also just make sure, so you see the um, spaces you might have between the cardboard. Make sure they're almost flush. Okay. Um, yep. Because you want to make like kind of just a solid a, exactly. situation yep. here. So we're just gluing. Our wonderful pieces of cardboard. And yeah, this doesn't just have to be cardboard. You could even cut out pieces of a like a magazine, magazine exactly, yeah. a book, any sort of pictures you might think are exciting. Um, this is just a more accessible craft for most folks, as it might just be something that's laying around the house, ready to be on its way out. But we're trying to. Give it some new life, I guess, you know? So uh, now, yeah, exactly. Show yeah. a little interwoven type of cardboard cutout nice. situation going on. Yeah. So then you're kind of just going to keep going back and forth. But as you go, so see the way you put, see how that one's under mm -hmm. on that side? Now put this one on top. Okay. You you know weaving. Yeah. I know you know weaving, right? I got, you do yeah. some crocheting. I, heard I do you some crocheting. About. I yeah. do some... Stuff. <laughs> some stuff. You know, some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to weave again. And sometimes you might have to bend um, the cardboard a little, but that's okay because in the end it will not, it won't matter. So we'll just kind of keep going back and forth like this with the short pieces. Yep. Beautiful. So now we're on our second row, you're on your third row. Yeah, so just make sure that every piece of cardboard that's getting 
glued essentially, I guess. You can kind of change up the colors. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of alternating with the labels out. Yeah, yeah, actually, I, I think I'll do that. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. just, for, just for flavor. Yeah. <laughs> for flavor's sake. So how long have you been working with Arc Arts Junction? I've been working with Arts Junction since uh, June. Nice. Yeah, so in the summer we did a lot of um, craft sales in the courtyard and we did a whole remodel of the courtyard back there. Oh, beautiful. And we actually had um, paint that was donated by Synonym, which we used to do our whole courtyard, which is nice. That's fantastic. A bunch of different and fun colors. Um, yeah, now I've been working there about nine months and it's awesome. We during COVID, we've kind of been focusing a lot of our efforts on doing a lot of remote sort of mm -hmm. delivery of getting people art supplies, such as curbside pickups and um, uh, crafting kits. Yeah. Oh, so nice. We, yeah. So what kind of kits do people get for home? Oh, yeah. So so we took these. Um, now we're on the third row. Showing you there. So um, one kit we did, we do like. Um, we did like a pom-pom tassel kit. So we'll give you a bunch of yarn, tons oh, of it. Yeah. You'll make a bunch of pom-poms and then you'll do a, um, a tassel almost, like a wall hanging type of thing. Oh, cool. And then we did a weaving thing. So we took um, a thick piece of cardboard, we cut a little rectangle out, mm -hmm. and then um, strung a little, you know weaving kind of? Like I a, know the loom, a loom. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we made looms out of cardboard and then just That's strung back awesome. string and then give people about like seven to eight different options of yarn and then, um, yeah, that was a fun one. Um, are these like paid to order or are they free to pick up or like what's the situation? Well, because we're like an accessible um, nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. it is essentially free to anyone who needs it to be free who can't afford it but mm -hmm. um usually yeah it was just about a ten dollar craft you'd order online you'd come pick up or sometimes we drop off to your house that's fantastic yeah so definitely gives people something to do at home as well and so. a lot of a lot of people really needed it because i think um there's a lot of stir craziness going on like in oh, in november and december like when winter started and the crafts are such a good way to like i don't know do, like like we said before, like get busy with your hands and like make something that looks nice. And those like wall hangings, you know, like yeah, you can get wall them hangings at, like, are fun, right? You can get them at like Urban Outfitters or Anthropology for like a hundred and forty dollars, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. it's like you can make one yourself out of things you you might have. Exactly. So yeah, we did some kits like macrame out of um, old jute twine, which you can pick up at like oh, yeah, Dollarama yeah. or something if you need. Yes. Or, so the next part of this, so we basically interwoven this cardboard rectangle shape. So, yeah, yours is looking perfect. So I'm just gonna go ahead quickly and cut off the edges here. Just to kind of give it a little bit of a structure, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then there's one, yeah, will it fit? It will fit. So if I'm not, you thinking. can add on another piece too, if you want a glue. I could have on yeah. this piece, yeah. We'll just cut this one. I was thinking another thing that would be cool if we had a hole puncher would be to like oh, yeah. do holes and then like we had some cool ribbon or string and like use that to lace it up. Mm. That's that would be idea. cool. Or I have a hole puncher at home, so I might do that later. Yeah, or we can just rip it with scissors. <laughs> could just stab a few holes. So, okay, so we're just gluing the little edges that might be out. So now we're gluing the ends together, yeah? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sweet. Ooh, it's hot. Ooh, girl. <laughs> Ooh, girl. <laughs> so, you might get yourself covered in glue. We've been using glue all day. So now you have the shape of some sort of thing that you might want on your wrist or anywhere else. You could even have it on your table. So mm -hmm. that's the beginning of it. If you were to use different sorts of um, pictures to put on it or yes, so there you go. It fits. Nice, we nice, have our nice. little wrist fascinator. So now you can bedazzle it and add different items. So let's see here. I'm kind of liking this gold. The gold is cute. Yeah, I think I it's got fun. some Oops, of this. 
Oh, that's fun, yeah. And I think I had some pom-poms going on, too. Oh, there's some pom-poms in here. So I might like the idea of just kind of putting... I don't want to defeat the purpose of the interwoven cardboard, so I don't want to cover the entire thing. But I like the idea of just maybe wrapping some gold. If he doesn't like some gold. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm like, this is 100% something I would... That's cool. Wear. Did you get? Did you glue it, or you saw the sticker thing on it? Uh, I'm just gluing it yeah, to yeah. make sure that it actually sticks. So if you take um, the paper on the back of it off, it's actually just a big sticker. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how this one will glue. The question. Um, one second. Gonna, I'm just going to glue it. I have another tassel here. Oh, cute. So I'm probably just going to do the ends of this one here. Yeah, I think I'll just do that. So what are you going to do to yours? I am just going to keep adding these in kind of a little pattern around it. That's cool, yeah. And I think I am going to add some of the pom-poms because I think those are very I, cute. I love pom-poms so much. I also love pom-poms. Yeah. Do you I ever make them. any? I have made some before. Yeah, yeah they're, they're really fun. fun. Uh, I well, back when I was in my big knitting craze in high school, yeah. <laughs> um, I made like I got really into making hats and stuff like that. Um, and I had a little pom pom maker, but I know you can oh, also you had make the them. Maker, yeah. yeah, I know you can make them out of like cardboard. Like it's just circles. yeah, that little exactly. They're the just little, little sandwiches. Cut. Yeah, basically. And they're super easy to do, right? And I'm, I always forget that like pom poms are just a bunch you know, of rolled up, a bunch of rolled up yarn. Yarn, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, oh, hey, I can do this, and I can do this quickly. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of like making a dress out of just like a million pom poms. A million pom poms, yeah. yeah. That is very cute and very fun. People like to kind of crap on uh, using bodysuits on Drag Race, but like if you're looking for something <laughs> to be the base of an outfit that on, you can right? glue stuff yeah. to, bodysuits are the way of the future, yeah. and they're the way to go, oh. and Michelle Visage can suck it. <laughs> Which is another reason I'll never be on Drag Race. It takes a little bit of extra materials and creativity in the end. But they have stuff like that, like this is stuff that's available at the dollar store. This is stuff that this you is can get all so accessible everywhere. Right? I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use the spray paint again. Ooh, yeah, or go for the it. The spray adhesive. Here's the Thank glitter. you so much. Yeah, I'm just gonna pour some glitter on it and then finish it off. Okay. Giving me a little bit of a little bit of a cute clown moment. <laughs> yeah. Just clowning around. Clowns are a big source of inspiration for me. Yeah. Yeah. Emotionally and <laughs> aesthetically. So here I have my little wristwatch, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> You could actually like glue I'm gonna wear a it up to the watch. bar tonight. Absolutely. Not actually, so I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and oh, actually, and then I see other materials. You could wear it to go pick up some takeout from Club yeah. 200 because <laughs> they are yeah. open for takeout they as of are. March 5th. Yes, yeah. which is super exciting. I miss their fried pickle so badly. I've never had a fried pickle. How have you really? No, I've only oh, had like a. Boy. I feel like I've had a fried banana once. That, I okay. think that's the only deep fried type of thing. I don't know. I haven't had any of those. Fried pickles type of are god tier. Like yeah. they're so good. Well, maybe it's because I don't love pickles. It, yeah, if you're not a pickle yeah. fan, don't like yeah. don't stress yourself oh. about it. But I am a large fan of pickles. <laughs> um, and, and 
Thai pickles are really good. See, this is cute. I have these oh. like I have these like lace gloves, and I feel like this would be very cute and like clowny. Super gorge. I love it. Super gorge. Yes. Look at yours. Oh, you've got like actual fringe too. I don't yeah, I don't know. I just found it here. This is I other materials you can find that. at Arts Junction if you're ever looking for some upcycling ideas or yeah. materials. And uh, thank you, a big thank you to the Gorge Festival for hosting us and helping us create crafts. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your, enjoy your craft. Enjoy Happy your crafting. crafting. Yes.